Hi. Okay. Everyone can hear me. Um, thanks for the nice introduction. My name is Jan Gunnerman. Uh, I'm going to present the work um, Gyroware that I conducted with my colleagues from Ulm University, Tele Denmark, and uh, MIT Media Lab. Um, I'm going to jump right into and show you the prototype that we built. Um, so basically, what we did, we attached a um, flywheel on the back side of VR HMD. Uh, which simulates inertia for the person. You can see my colleague Dennis here um, playing a game. And we can now control um, the amount of resistance we can put by um, increasing the rotation of the flywheel. Um, so for the motivation, <coughs> our goal was um, to generate kinesthetic feedback for mobile VR environments. And if you attended the talk this morning, I'm a, I'm a big fan of mobile virtual reality. And um, so if I break it down, so haptics, that we perceive can be broken down to two things. We can perceive tactile, and we heard a lot of these talks today about tactile perception, which we perceive um, through the mechanoreceptors on the surface of our skin. So when I hand, uh, hold my hand out of the car, I'm going to perceive cold or bugs or something that fly into it. And the force I'm going to talk about is uh, kinesthetic force. So the kinesthetic force we perceive through uh, muscles and tenders in our arm. And so the second way you start, waving your arm a little bit, maybe people have done this out of the car, this is why you perceive. And to get a little bit of an understanding for the force. If anyone remembers a few of these power balls that were hip when I was a little bit younger, uh, this is actually the force that we generate. This is the force that you can perceive with our device. Um, so the use of flywheels was done already in prior art to well, a certain amount. And Chu et al. Uh, Chu et al. presented um, a prototype where they uh, wanted to use these two, the, the concept of the gyroscopic force and two flywheels and uh, put it in a backpack, attach it to the humans, and use it for um, human balance, so kind of avoid a falling. So the, uh, the force itself can be strong enough to, to well, achieve this. Um, and also in the, in the form or in the field of um, VR and haptics, um, Jan et al. presented the work. And there's a, there's a bunch of works. I'm just going to uh, briefly talk about um, some of them, where they used um, this force, this force, uh, the, uh, this flywheel, and they attached it to a gimbal, or here two gimbals. And this is an interesting thing, because you have to understand that the force that is generated by a flywheel is a reactive force. You always will need an input force, and then it's going to redirect you. And by attaching it on a gimbal, you could actually control it again and trying to, well, nudge you in a certain direction. This is what Jana did um, at Haptics. And at CHI 2012, uh, Bada already presented how they attached two of these flywheels on the back of a tablet. And um, what they could achieve with this is creating this kinesthetic force. And really, really neat and interesting is they built this out of custom hardware, out of hard drives, old hard drives. And this is exactly how we did it as well. So I'm going to talk a little about the implementation. So we had quite a several prototypes. It started off with really, really cheap little attachments of a play toy uh, of, the, of a gyroscope later on, having one attachment. And then the, the third prototype, bit, we had actually three um, flywheels attached to, to every axis. And this was the, how, how it looked. And you can see here my, my, my friend Hapreet wearing it. And it, it was not that pleasant for him because it's, it's incredibly heavy. It generates a lot of force. You can feel it. But it is, yeah. Um, and then we were thinking, how can we reduce some weight? So where is this force actually necessary? And if you think about the, the well, the, the physics in general thing about it is what, the second where we attach it on the roll axis here, um, the where you're going to feel it is the second way you input something or where you rotate either around the pitch or the yaw. And if we think about virtual reality, this is basically what we do. We look left, we look right, we look up, and we look down. And by ignoring the roll rotation, we were able to reduce um, the other two uh, flywheels and ending up in this more mobile version, we call it, of um, driver VR. And uh, a little bit of a breakdown what we use here. So we, we use the LiPo for uh, the power. Arduino Nano and HCL6 Bluetooth device for the communication with a, a Unity application with running in the background. Um, ESC speed controller to control the three-phase uh, motor of a hard drive. And this is basically a motor of a hard drive for several disks that we can stack on top. And the more we stack, the, the more force you can perceive, or the faster we spin, the more force you can perceive. And this is a crucial part, a damper, a certain, well, attachment there. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, why, why this is important. And we also built a more mobile version, but this is, this is something you can attach everywhere on, onto your body. And that is where we started. I, I started to wrap it all about body and trying to see, okay, where can we else perceive this force except for the hat? 
And this was an informal evaluation, so this is no scientific study that we did there. I just literally tried it on, and we, f we found that at the head mount, at the A, at the C, at the hands, this is the place that we perceive the force the most. Um, we further on implement, uh, implemented several applications and tried to map this um, kinesthetic force in some of our experiences. And here you can see a fly application, so you can fly through a virtual world, you have to collect stars, and the faster you fly, the faster we spin the disk, and the faster you have the perception of, um, of this kinesthetic force. Um, this is one of our favorite applications. So this is a, a shooter game where we map the health bar onto the uh, rotation speed. So it means the more life you lose, the heavier it is to look around, so you kind of perceive that you actually are wounded in a little bit, in a way. And we were also able to um, generate different environments. For instance, here you're on a different planet, and we constantly have the disk spinning at a high rotation, so it, you, you perceive the most force out of it. Um, we further run a user study on this, and for the user study, we had to um, attach the whole, or we, we put the flywheel on the back and on the front, and we used their uh, bicycle helmet to make it all rigid and fixed on the, yeah, onto the human body. Um, sadly, we, we did not find any significant differences, so I'm not going to go into much detail about simulator sickness and immersion and enjoyment about this. And this is probably due to the low sample size. We only had 12 participants running this. And uh, also through the negative aspect of the weight, because the prototype still, and we have a demo, you can drop by and visit our demo, the prototype itself is still a little bit heavy. Um, but some key um, takeaway messages I can give you. Um, one interesting thing was um, the force that we generate is not realistic. This is not, really, this is not how you're going to feel when you are on a different planet, probably. Um, but it's, it's fine enough. It is, if it is consistent with the virtual experience that you have, and it uh, gives you a, another modality, how you can perceive. For instance, the shooter example is really beautiful. This is not how you feel when you are wounded, but it was, was fitting for the scenario, and the people enjoyed this. And one interesting thing, or one crucial part, is this fixing, this mounting onto the head. The mounting of the device is quite important. And um, yeah, I'm going to quick up some conclusion. Um, the contributions we had, we showed the concept for generating inertial uh, feedback in mobile VR, um, showed the technical implementation that we can realize is not first um, impressions, the first um, experiences with the user study. And I'm going to quickly thank. Um, the whole fluid, uh, uh, fluid interface at MIT Media Lab for giving you a wonderful time for the three months I spent there and were able to build this prototype. Thanks a lot. <laughs> questions? Any questions? Hi. Uh, yeah. Thanks for a nice talk. And I was just wondering with how many levels uh, did you see or experience how many levels of forces uh, that the participants could understand or any continuous or different levels? Yeah. Of um, so you need, the, the thing is you speed it up to a certain, so I think we were running at the end at around 12,000 RPM and you need um, a certain threshold. So there's a long time, you don't feel, you don't feel, you don't feel, you don't feel, and at one point you're going to perceive it. And then um, we didn't measure actually how good they can distinguish it at higher levels, but this is a really valid point. You need a certain rotation, you need a certain force until you feel it. And if you, you can check it out at the demo uh, with the shooter. Initially, you're not going to perceive any force. You're going to think, okay, it's just like a little bit heavy, and the second it spins up, it spins up at a certain point. You're going to feel the force, and it's going to, well, resist. Um, hi, I'm Bruce from NYU Shanghai, and I want to ask how fast does this react to speed changes? Like, because HDD spin up in relatively slow rate, and I'm wondering if you rapidly change the speed of the spinning disk um, while the user feel that his head is being dragged to one like direction, or um, yeah. Yeah, this, this is a really good point. It was a, the, the initial idea we had. We wanted to have a certain nudge in a certain direction, but as you said yourself, the, um, the increasing of the speed is quite low with the HD hard drive. So a trick that people um, did was um, the Badash um, at Kai 2012, they used two flywheels spinning in opposite direction. This reduced the force, and it's faster to slow one down to use the brakes. So this could be a trick how we can do this. In our prototype, we just have a, a constant spinning, and the only thing you perceive it is when you actually move around. But we also thought about it, if you could actually use brakes, strong brakes, and you could break it down, then you could receive such a nudge, probably. 
but this is again theory. All right, well, this brings us to the end of the session. I really want to thank all the speakers today. That was a fabulous session. And I want to make one more point that two of our papers that you guys saw today are actually going to, going to have demos. I'm just going to uh, mention them again, Muscle Plotter and the Gyro VR that you just heard. So come and check them out tonight at the demo reception at 6. Thanks again, everybody, and thank you for coming.